What we currently see is a trend to more and more artificial intelligence, context aware machines, and personalization of information. And how much of the consumption of us will rely on the machines in the future? Today, we are much further than we think. Um, the internet enables us to access the information and the machine learning uh, steers and leads our decision process, from household robots to travelers' cars and uh, shop recommendations on e-commerce. Will this now disrupt the classic retail industry then? And the classic retailers are automating the business processes in the back since 20 years, from supply relationship management to ERP systems and payment. But now the new thing is the customer experience is totally automated. Um, you will see in the end um, what the machine learning predicts to you, and this steers your consume. Um, the technology impact is increasing and accelerating. First, there was a mobile phone, then the internet revolution. 2.5 million people have internet access today, but there will be 5 billion people in 2020. So 140 characters on Twitter can even mobilize a whole country and trigger a revolution. So now we have 7 billion mobile phones around the globe this year. The impact, McKinsey predicts, for this mobile internet trend is $25 trillion till 2025. So massive scale. This then impacts also the classic retailers again in the supermarkets. So if it's like in the future that we only, the mobile phone tracks us, we recommend, recommend us products and we navigate, get navigated through the shop, do we only scan the products and drones deliver them? How will our fridge order automatically based on our historic food consumption? Let's think even one step further when human and machines become connected via brain and computer interfaces. The futurist Ray Kurzweil predicts that these small nano robots in our blood will in the end make us all two gold medal winners. So we are changing totally through technology. So is innovation then always opening a stress field between the good and the bad? Is what can be done, will be done, as it always was? Is it that we, the machine learning companies, are the one percent to create automated consumption machines and the 99 percent else are just consuming and become the lemmings? How is this machine learning working in the end? Machine learning is always based on a specific training set of data and the algorithm learns from that. New information is put into that training set, but it's, if it's not enough significance, it's filtered out totally. So can we say then that if it's filtered out, that machine learning is always filtering our reality? How much relevance do we need to have true information coming to us in the end? Is the true information always filtered out by the machines? And who is leading that decision process? Is it like even like in Platon's cave allegory? So Platon describes in his um, story that people sit in a cave and can only see the shadows on the wall speaking. And they think that this is reality because they don't know the real world. It's getting filtered by the wall. In the end, somebody comes out, recognizes that this is not true, comes back, but the people are not believing that because it's just too far away from their reality. Back to today, can we now say that Google is Platon's wall 2.0 and that we, the machine learning companies, create a reality distortion field for the people? We can predict even everything from when you wake up, where you go, what you work, um, and the dating portals even decide by algorithm who you will marry. Neuroscientists now found out that you can anywhere handle maximum 16 mental, mental impressions per second. That means that is it by our biological condition that we like that personalization so much because we filter any, anyway everything what we can see. And the funny thing is now, after we have all information to act and consume totally rationally, we prefer going back to the small grocery shop around the corner because that girl knows what we want to buy and smiles at us when we buy. So after all, do we want to have, after all that inter automation, the human interaction back? And who's leading that process? And who's deciding how much automation we get? And who will rule that, setting the rules? The companies, the government, or even the machines themselves setting the rules how much automation we want? For the sake of personalization and convenience, are we really willing to give up that freedom of choice we got, uh, which is so important for our society? This I would like to discuss in the breakout groups.